can we start na? Or ano? Kulang pa yung iba. Okay. 100, ilang kayo? 111, 120? 120 doc. 120. Sige. So, good afternoon. We have three topics for this afternoon. RBC, WBC, and hemostasis and thrombosis. Uh, we'll have three PowerPoints. Then divide us into three, then, kasi three chapters. Then we'll talk about first the RBCs. Nakikita naman yung shared slide. Yes. Yes, okay. doc. Yes, doc. So when we talk about RBCs, you will hear the term erythrocytes. They are only synonymous, huh? Uh, they have a lifespan of 120 days and its main function is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. They go hand in hand, oxygen to the tissues, carbon dioxide to the lungs. So oxygen, you may know already hemoglobin the hemoglobin protein na ginagawa sa ano sa bone marrow within your RBCs hopefully narinig niyo na rin yung carbonic anhydrase na enzyme carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme responsible in converting your carbon dioxide to carbonic acid then it would be uh, excreted by the RBCs to the circulation to stabilize your acid-base balance. Kasi yung, meron tayong tinatawag na carbonic acid chloride channel. When the chloride goes in, para ma-maintain yung pH ng blood, lumalabas yung carbonic acid mo. Now, how it is synthesized sa uh, bone marrow? It, uh, it starts from your stem cells. You, you, hopefully, narinig nyo na yung term na stem cells sa inyong pre-med. Stem cells are your mother cells. To mature, it needs your interleukins 1, 3, and 6. Please take note of that. For maturity of your stem cells, interleukin 1, 3, and 6. But if you want to produce an erythrocyte or an RBC, you need the hormone erythropoietin. Please take note that your erythropoietin is secreted by your kidneys in response to decreased oxygen levels in the body or blood loss. Yan yung dalawang stimuli ng erythropoietin. So you have already maturing stem cells because of your interleukin 1, 3, and 6. And this patient, you have a gunshot wound or a chemo patient na anemic, erythropoietin yung magpapadami ng kanyang RBCs. Okay? Your RBCs naman, uniquely, has very, very, very few organelles. Very few mitochondria, very few Golgi apparatus, and no nucleus. Why? Its main function is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. Yun lang yun. Wala na silang ibang gagawin sa buhay nila kundi mag-transport lang ng oxygen at carbon dioxide. So wala nang gamit sa kanila ang nucleus, wala nang gamit sa kanila ang mitochondria and other organelles. Kasi andyan na si hemoglobin and carbon, carbonic anhydrase. Now, on the histology portion, the shape of your RBC is a biconcave. Nakikita nyo naman to on the top. This is your RBC. Biconcave because increase high surface volume ratio and in this third image pwede siyang mag-squeeze to your capillaries okay lang sa veins and arteries kasi uh, large diameter ano yan sila mga blood vessels pero pag andyan na sa capillaries kailangan na nilang mag-fold and you will know later na pag hindi by concave hindi ganito yung kanilang shape may hirapan yung RBC na sumuksok sa maliliit na capillaries leading to blockage and delikado yan sa patient natin. 
So here is the diagram of the synthesis of RBCs. So this is your hematopoietic stem cell or your hemocytoblast and will lead to uh, maturity because of your interleukin 1, interleukin 3, and interleukin 6. Then because of your erythropoietin, it will become erythrocytes. Later, we will talk about these megakaryocytes and lymphocytes and other WBCs. Pero itong lineage lang muna natin yung pag-uusapan natin. Uh, this one, mainly, erythrocyte. So, the function of your carbonic anhydrase, as I was saying. First image, at the active tissues, the cell will release the byproduct, carbon dioxide. Then it will be taken up by your RBCs and with the help of your carbonic anhydrase, it will become a bicarbonate. Then it will subsequently be a carbonic acid then excreted in exchange for your chloride ion. Once the RBC is at the capillaries at the lungs, it will promote transport of your carbon dioxide by converting your carbonic acid to carbon dioxide and releasing it to your lungs, then exhaling it. This is a simple diagram lang. So hopefully Dr. Monsanto already talked about hemoglobin. It is yung chapter niya, if I remember, kasama ni myoglobin because those are the two most common containing proteins in the body. We will be talking only about hemoglobin at this point in time. So your hemoglobin contains the heme. Iron plus protoporphyrin 9 leads to heme. And it will only bind to oxygen on a ferrous state. As I was saying last discussion natin two weeks ago. So the iron should stay on a ferrous state to bind to the oxygen. And it has two different polypeptide subunits. On the adult, please take note, two alphas and two beta subunit ng kanyang protein. Again, I repeat, two alpha and two beta mature hemoglobin. Okay? Mature hemoglobin is an alpha 2 and beta 2. Kasi during maturity, from, your, from the fetal life to the adult, meron pa tayo niyan mga iba't ibang kind uh, iba't ibang ori ng, ng hemoglobin. You have a fetal hemoglobin with an alpha and gamma. Meron rin yan al hemoglobin, hemoglobin A2, alpha, alpha and delta ata yun. May iba't ibang kinds ng hemoglobin na natural sa tao. Pero 90, 99% ng hemoglobin sa adult is alpha 2 and beta 2 subunits ng hemoglobin and it can bind up to four molecules of oxygen. Uh, hopefully narinig yun na yung cooperative binding ng, hemog ng oxygen wherein the hardest part on carrying oxygen or attaching oxygen to the hemoglobin is binding the first. Once once the oxygen is the first oxygen is bound to the first hemoglobin, madali na lang uh, magre-relax na yung hemoglobin mo. So it can bind uh, immediately to other oxygen molecules. That is your cooperative binding. And it behaves like two proteins. Hopefully, na rin na, nakita nyo na yung diagram ni Dr. Monsanto, yung sigmoidal oxygen curve, wherein the, the hemoglobin is on its relaxed state and easy to bind to the oxygen in the lungs. Then, going upward, pagpapunta na siya sa tissues, madali niyang marirelease yung oxygen sa tissues. And wherein your hemoglobin mo, also known as your tense or taut state. Again, on the high oxygen levels na tissues like your lungs, madaling magbabind yung oxygen to your hemoglobin. 
that that state of the hemoglobin wherein hemoglobin has coupled oxygen that is your relaxed state where if it is on your peripheral tissues sabi natin sa sa mga muscles mo sa atay mo sa spleen mo or to your kidneys it needs oxygen kasi oxygen deficient siya wala siyang direct contact to oxygen unless unlike your lungs so madaling marirelease yung oxygen to the peripheral tissues that's when you uh, that's when you say that it is on your tense state or your thought state pag wala ng oxygen sa hemoglobin another concept on your rbcs is that it given na walang mitochondria siya or konti lang yung kanyang mitochondria hindi siya nakaka nakaka-utilize naka nakaka-produce ng ATP ng kanya so what it needs is your glycolysis pathway uh, may I ask diniskas na ba ni Dr. Dr. Monsanto yung glycolysis pathway kasi kasama to ng mga hexose phosphogenase pathway kasi wala pa anyways uh, siya kasi yung naka-assign nito kasi siya yung best nitong mag-discuss pero ang gusto ko lang maano ninyo is that yung kanyang ATP na na-produce is based on your glycolysis. Your glucose will enter ba via GLUT1 na ano na port and it will undergo your glycolysis pathway. So please take note RBC glycolysis wala nang iba okay the atp source of your rbc is the glycolysis pathway and the glycolysis pathway is very important because of the so called rapoport lubering shunt anong gamit ni rapoport lubering shunt at some point of your glycolysis pathway, meron kang yung glyceraldehyde triphosphate mo magiging 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. Your 1,3-biphosphoglycerate can go directly to become phosphoglycerate, then become pyruvate, and your pyruvate will go to your citric acid cycle. Pero, meron tayong tinatawag na rapoport lubering shunt, wherein, please take note of the enzyme, the, your 2,3-BPG mutase or your bisphosphoglycerate mutase will convert your 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to your 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate or your 2,3-BPG. Ang tanong, Doc, anong gamit ni 2,3-BPG? Given that we have the so-called tense form or your tot form of your hemoglobin, kailangan niyang ma-stabilize. Okay? Para hindi niya i-hold yung oxygen na palabas papunta ang peripheral tissues. At yung tumutulong para sa para yung, hemo, yung hemoglobin na tot form na ma-release niya yung oxygen is your 2,3-BPG. So when your 2,3-BPG is increased, more oxygen is going to your peripheral tissues. But if your... 2,3 BPG is decreased, mas gusto ng hemoglobin na hapanhawakan yung oxygen sa kanya lang. So magkakaroon yung tissue ng de de oxygen deficit kung decrease yung 2,3 BPG mo. So this is very important. Okay? Please take note. Rapoport lubering shan, 2,3 BPG mutase, 2,3 bisphoglycerate or your 2,3 BPG release of oxygen to the tissues. Specifically, your 2,3-BPG stabilizes your state of hemoglobin by forming salt bridges in the terminal amino groups of your beta, chain, beta chains. So your valine, lysine, and histidine, given na yung kanilang mga position. Please take note of the, ends, uh, of the amino acids on your beta chains. Valine, lysine, and histidine, kasi very specific yung 2,3-BPG mo. So on this uh, picture, 
This one is a beta subunit. This one is a beta subunit. This one is your 2,3 BPG. So you can say that this one is in the T state na hemoglobin. Because if we remove this 2,3 BPG, magkakaroon niya ng mga oxygen molecules. Kasi ayaw hindi niya ma-release ma yung oxygen. Kaya lang walang oxygen yan kasi nandyan si 2,3 BPG. And this is the diagram sa specificity ni 2,3 BPG. Si Valin, si Lysin, and Histidin. These are the important disorders of your RBCs. We will not uh, no, discuss too much on this because this will be discussed on your second year. Uh, uh, no, yung pathology department, they will be in charge on this. I will be talking about some lung. So your methemoglobin. Please take note that your methemoglobin is we're in the heme portion of the the heme iron of your hemoglobin is on a ferric state or Fe3 plus or oxidized iron. It can be inherited or acquired. So constantly in the body, meron talagang nagkakaroon ng hemoglobin na may ferric na iron. And this one is controlled by your NADH cytochrome B5 reductase system. Ang haba, pero kailangan nyo yan ma-memorize. Your NADH cytochrome B5 reductase system is being alerted wherein na-oxidize yung iron ng hemoglobin mo. And its main function is to reduce the iron on your hemoglobin. So the system goes this way. Your cytochrome B plus your NADH would be uh, acted upon by the enzyme. It will reduce your cytochrome B and will oxidize your NAD or it will remove you the hydrogen on your, on your NADH. Okay? Wala nang gamit na dyan si NAD. Nakuha na na yung kailangan ni cytochrome B, yung hydrogen ion. Now, given, given that the cytochrome B is reduced already, it will act on your oxidized iron on the hemoglobin, reducing the oxidized iron to Fe2+. Sorry. Ito siya. So the most important here is your cytochrome B. Okay? This one, this reaction here, cytochrome B plus NADH. Kasi kung kulang ka ng cytochrome B or kulang ka ng NADH, magpapersist yung oxidized iron and your oxidized iron in the hemoglobin cannot bind to your oxygen or low affinity to oxygen. Please take note of that. Your not a cytochrome B5 reductase system. Tapos ito na yung mga inherited, inherited niya. Methemoglobin Iwate, methro, methemoglobin Hyde Park, methemoglobin Boston, methemoglobin Saskatoon, and methemoglobin methemoglobin Milwaukee. Good to know lang to siya. Uh, lumalabas lang to pag mga pop-up questions. Pero ang gusto ko lang ma-remember nyo sa slide na to is your NADH cytochrome B5 reductase system is the one that reduces the oxidized iron in your hemoglobin if needed. So what happens if meron kang methemoglobin given that the uh, ang methemoglobin cannot bind to your oxygen the patient goes cyanotic so dark tongue dark nail beds and dark blood ito siya para siya both are arterial to both are arterial pero ito siya given that low oxygenation given na peri or methemoglobin yung dinadala ng RBC mo, kaya dark siya.
another uh, another abnormality of your hemoglobin is your hemoglobin S. Favorite question sa mga ano sa patho ninyo na subject and possible lumabas din to sa inyong ano sa inyong exam. Your hem your hemoglobin S is a very unique hemoglobin wherein your glutamic acid, please take note of the amino acid being replaced. Uh, your glutamic acid is being replaced by valin on what position? Sixth amino acid position on the beta subunit of the hemoglobin. Repeat ko ulit, ha? The glutamic acid on the sixth position of your beta subunit is being replaced by valin. Given that your valin is a hydrophobic amino acid, once deoxidized, it will form the so-called sticky patch. And once that sticky patch lumabas, it will bind to other deoxygenated hemoglobin. Ito siya, yung diagram. Normally, yung sinasabi natin kanina, normal, normal hemoglobin is your HbA. Ito siya. Wala siyang sticky patch because the six amino acid is a glutamic acid on the beta subunits. Pero, magka problema sa genes ng pasyente. Meron siyang abnormality sa hemoglobin synthesis ng beta subunit niya. Yung sixth position ng beta subunit instead of glutamic acid is valine. This would be your sticky patch. This is your valine. Please take note of that. This is your valine. Normally, your hemoglobin S will act like your oxygenated hemoglobin A. Pero pag tanggalan mo siya ng oxygen, ito yung mangyayari. It will bind to each other pag walang hemoglobin, pag walang oxygen sa hemoglobin. And mangyayari niyan, magsisikal yung, yung RBCs mo. Once na magsikal, any abnormal RBCs is uh, destroyed by your spleen. Any abnormal RBCs, please take note of that. So, pag magsikal siya, magdikit-dikit yung hemoglobin mo, sisirain siya ng spleen mo. And it will lead to anemia. Now, let's talk about hemolytic anemia. There are many causes of your hemolytic anemia. Merong inside the RBC, minsan uh, yung iba extrinsic naman. Uh, eh, this will be discussed to multiple subjects. Pero I just want to uh, elaborate that anything, anything that will kung uh, sisirain niya yung form ng RBC or inside the RBC, ang tendency is sisirain siya ng spleen, mga macrophages sa spleen. Most of your destruction of your RBCs na abnormal sa spleen nangyayari. Kaya dito sa extrinsic, pag meron kang hyperspleenism, nagkakaproblema sa loob ng spleen mo, cannot detect normal and abnormal, kahit yung normal na sisira na rin. First, enzyme deficiency. Please take note of your G6PD dehydrogenase. Your G6PD reduces your NADP to NADH. It is the most common deficiency of all enzymopathies. Possibly isa sa inyo may G6PD. Anybody dyan sa students na may na na G6PD, na may mga bawal ng fava beans, any oxidizing ng mga foods or any antibiotics na nakakapag-oxidize, bawal sila nito. Because once na mawala yung G6PD mo sa katawan, it cannot sustain reduced glutathione. Okay? It cannot sustain reduced glutathione. What is the importance of your reduced glutathione? Pag kulang yung glutathione mo, yung free radicals hindi na neutralize. Kaya ang nangyayari, 
naghihimulays yung RBCs mo. Ang iba naman, nagpo-form ng Heinz bodies. Please take note of this. This is uh, unique on your G6PD. Your Heinz bodies are oxygenated uh, or oxygenated are oxidized, sorry, not oxygenated, oxidized hemoglobin. Once your the proteins of your hemoglobin oxidize, masisira yan sila, they will tend to aggregate and they will form the so-called Heinz body. This is a microscopic structure na very unique for your G6PD. Ito siya, sorry. Inano ka lang sa next slide. Ito siya. Yan, mga Heinz body yan siya. And this is the reaction that is catalyzed by your G6PD. Glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and your glucose 6-phosphate with the help of your glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase tapos yung kanyang cofactor, NADP to NADH will produce 6-phosphogluconate. We don't need... To further this one, ito yung kailangan natin, your NADPH. Your NADPH is the one used to reduce your oxidized glutathione. Kasi yung glutathione mo is being recycled kasi. Reduce glutathione, when there is free radical, gagamitin magiging oxidized glutathione. Now, To, re to replenish the reduced glutathione, gagamitin yung NADPH to stabilize your oxidized glutathione to turn it back to your reduced glutathione. So pag walang, wala si G6PD, walang mako-convert sa NADP to NADPH. Pag walang NADPH, Walang, mag, walang magagamit to reduce your glutathione, to form it to a reduced glutathione. So, pag walang reduced glutathione, uh, the free radicals will run amok and will oxidize your hemoglobin, forming, sorry, Heinz bodies. Okay. Another enzyme deficiency, your pyruvate kinase. Your pyruvate kinase converts your ADP to ATP in glycolysis. Once your pyruvate kinase is absent, walang magko-convert na ADP to ATP. Walang ATP yung RBCs mo. Pag walang RBCs, uh, pag walang ATP yung RBCs mo, yung mga pump ng RBCs mo hindi gagana. So, ang tendency is mag-sweswell siya. Some mag shrink Pag swollen ang RBC or shrunk ang RBC, madedetect yan ang spin mo is ah, abnormal to. Sisirain. Then that would lead to your anemia. So now, let's talk about the important proteins on the structure, ha? Huh? On the structure of your RBC. Sa cytoskeleton niya. This one, this line here is a strip of your electrophoresis of the proteins on the cytoskeleton. So pag meron kayong narinig na band 1 and band 2, Band 2.1, band 5, it refers to the position of the protein in the electrophoresis. SDS page yung ginamit. And this one here is the image on the structure, the correlative structure of your proteins. So first and very important protein is your spectrin. Uh, it is on the band 1 location and band 2 location, the alpha and beta, beta chain respectively. It is the most abundant protein in your RBC cytoskeleton and it is bound on the RBC membrane by your anchorin, this one. This is your spectrin. Yan yung spectrin mo. This is your RBC membrane. This is your anchorin. 
So it attaches your spectrin to your RBC membrane. Andito naman si actin, andito naman si band 4.1 protein. Give uh, si band 4.1 protein wala talaga siyang other name niyan. So this one stabilizes the cytoskeleton of your RBC. Okay? Please take note of this, please take note of this correlation. Pag aralin nyo to, yung mga proteins, aralin nyo kung paano sila nagkakabit-kabit. Aralin nyo itong picture na to because this one is very important. Because this, this picture tells you how it holds the shape of your RBC, how it holds that biconcave shape. Kasi pag hindi nga ba, biconcave, abnormal siya, sisirain siya ng RBC mo, ng, ano mo, ng spleen. So spectrin attached to the RBC, RBC membrane by your ankyrin, actin, and band 4.1 protein. It creates a mesh that resists swelling and maintains the RB, RBC shape. Next is your ankyrin. So given on the, on the image, it binds your spectrin to an ion channel or, or, or your an ion exchange protein or your band 3. Mahaba actually mga pangalan nila. Mas madali talagang sabihin band 1, band 2, band 3, band 2.1. Pero ang ankirin binds your band 1 to your band 3 protein. Okay, yan yung kanyang function. Now your actin, uh, actin sa muscle siya pero meron rin yung RBCs, it is labeled as band 5. Dito, binabind ni spec ni actin yung tail ni, yung, bina, yung function ni actin is it binds your spectrin to your band 4.1 for stability. Then your protein 4.1 or your band 4.1 Ang kanyang function is an anchor. It anchors your spectrin and your actin to the cell membrane. And it binds to your glycophorin A and C. Ito siya. This is your glycophorin A and C. So this one is your spectrin actin 4.1 interaction. This one is your spectrin ankyrin 3 interaction. Okay. Mga importante yan sila kasi it holds your, it holds the shape of your RBCs. Then your anion exchange protein, nakita nyo naman dito, it binds to your 4.1. It binds your 4.1 protein, one 4.1 protein to the lipid bilayer of your RBCs. Then your glycophorin A, B and C. Uh, ang importance nito is that it is a target of your plasmodium falciparum parasite. Okay? Especially your glycophorin A. Yan yung kanyang pinaka-distinct sa kanya. When we talk about the proteins on the cytoskeleton, we will talk about the membrane abnormalities. Dalwa, hereditary spherocytosis and hereditary elliptocytosis. Uh, hereditary spherocytosis, most common cause is deficiency of your spectrin or band 1. Okay, please take note of that. Hereditary spherocytosis, the most common cause is a decrease of spectrin in the RBCs. Pero, may pero, pwede rin magkaroon ng hereditary spherocytosis kung walang angkirin, walang band 3, walang band 4.1 or band 4.2 protein. Please take note of that. All of those proteins, pag maging deficient, pwedeng makakos ng hereditary spherocytosis. So, 
once uh, any of those proteins are absent, pwedeng maging sphere spherical ang shape ng RBCs, hindi by concave. And once maging spherical yung RBCs, it would be detected again by your spleen as an abnormal RBC and masisira siya and magkakaroon ng kanang anemia. Kaya ang treatment for those people who are having hereditary spherocytosis is tanggalin yung spleen para walang sisira ng RBC mo. Ang mangyayari, yung spherocytes, masisira na lang siya sa, within other tissues pero never sa spleen. Kasi pag meron ka pang spleen na meron kang hereditary spherocytosis, grabe anemia mo. Kasi andun yung graveyard ng RBCs. Any abnormal RBCs, kahit konting kink lang yan, sisirain ng spleen mo. That is your hereditary spherocytosis. Hereditary elliptocytosis, magkaiba lang sila ng shape, pero ang sabi ng herpers, si spectrin pa rin yung cause. Ibang book, mas inaano nila, recognize nila, band 4.1 protein. Yun yung cause ng elliptocytosis. Pero, minention na ni Harpers na si spectrin ang main cause. These are your spherocytes. Kita nyo? Ito yan siya. Normally, meron tayong central pallor. Yung one-third area, on the central area of your RBCs, yan yung tinatawag na central pallor. Diyan yung less lang yung RBC, less lang yung hemoglobin sa RBC. Once na magkaroon ka ng hereditary spherocytosis, mawawala yan na, mawawala yan na central pallor mo and magiging spherocyte siya. Pag pumunta yan sa spleen, sisirain yan. And these are your hereditary spherocyto, uh, hereditary ellipto, sorry. Hereditary elliptocytosis. Yan. Dapat hindi ganyan yung RBCs mo. Dapat more of ganito siya. Pero given na walang spectrin or your band 4.1 or your glycophorin proteins, magiging ganyan yung shape niya. Pagdating niya sa ano, sa spleen, sisirain ulit yan. Now, last but very not the least, the ABO system. ABO system is the very basic blood typing, ano, blood typing used in the hospital along with your RH blood typing. Now, the father of blood typing or your, sorry, the father of blood banking pala, si Lance Steiner in 1900. And the gene specific for your ABO system is located on the long arm of your chromosome 9. Specific ABO blood type of an individual has an antibody against other ABO blood type. So, ang common use nito is that pag type, for example, ako type B ako, meron ako anti-A antibody. So, di pwede akong salina ng, ng blood type A highly specific blood type B or kung wala, blood type O. Type O is the universal donor while type AB is the universal recipient. And your ABO antigens are oligosaccharides. Please take note of that. They are carbohydrates. Okay? It is present not just on your RBCs but on the most cells of the body and secretions. For RBCs, ABO substance present as a glyco glycosphingolipid, while in secretion, it is present as glycoproteins. Please take note of this. Huh? On RBCs, glycosphingolipid, on secretions, glycoprotein. So that sugar is bind to a lipid in your on the RBCs, pero sa secretions, it is bound to a protein. So how is your antigen or your ABO uh, antigen is formed? The H substance. This is the very basic substance present in your 
RBC. Pag ito lang meron ka, kung H substance lang meron ka, O positive ka niyan. O blood type O ka niyan. Okay? It is a precursor for both A and B substance. A substance type A, B substance type B. It is formed by addition of your fucose to the terminal galactose residue. Fucose added to your terminal galactose residue and it is catalyzed by your fucosyl transferase. Yan siya. Now, if you add, please take note of this, very important. If you add an acetyl galactosamine on your H substance, magkakaroon ka ng A substance. Pero pag galactose yung idagdag mo sa H substance, magiging B substance. Okay? Uh, it will determine your blood type na. A, B, or O. Pero kung antigen ang pag-uusapan, A, B, or H. Please take note of that. H substance, A substance, B substance. And acetyl galactosamine for your type A if pure galactose lang, type B. So let's go on to your platelets. Platelets, same as to your RBCs, lacks nucleus, but with many, many mitochondria and lysozymes. Okay, and a tubular network. It has two secretory vesicles, the so-called dense granules and the alpha granules. Please memorize kung ano yung nandyan sa mga granules na yan. Kasi hindi lang sa akin lalabas yan. Possible, tanungin pa yan sa pag-second year na ninyo, sa inyong pathology. So your dense granules contains the calcium, the ADP, and the serotonin. Your alpha granules, fibrinogen, fibronectin, platelet, growth factor, von will van factor, and other coagulation factors. Lahat yan may importansya. We will elaborate the functions of this when we tackle na hemostasis later. And it usually uses ATP from glucose but can generate ATP from fatty acids. Unlike your RBCs, it can only produce ATP by glycolysis. Pero siya pwede makagawa ng beta oxidation. Kasi may mitochondria. So at this point in time, this is good to know for you. Mas ma-elaborate to pag mag-second year na kayo. Uh, platelet disorders in large hyperactive platelets can lead to thrombosis which can cause acute coronary syndrome. We have the so-called immune thrombocytopenic purpura. It is presence of an antibody against its own platelet. That leads to depletion of your platelets. Na kaya pag mababa yung platelet mo, it would lead to bleeding. Kaya magkakaroon ka ng mga purpuras. Uh, purpura is a ano, dermal, sim, uh, dermal sign for bleeding. Von Wilbrandt's disease, most common bleeding disorder, inability of platelets to adhere to the endothelium. Kasi walang Von Wilbrandt factor yung system mo. You will later understand that your Von Wilbrandt factor binds your platelet to the endothelial cells of your uh, blood vessels that aids on the uh, ano, to stop the bleeding. We have also the Bernard Sulier syndrome. It, has, it is a deficiency in glycoprotein 1B. It impairs, please take note, platelet adhesion. Hindi nakakadikit yung platelet mo sa endothelial cells mo. Same as to your von Willebrand disease. Your, gland, your glassman thrombastin niya naman, deficient yung kanyang glycoprotein 2B3A, nakakaproblema naman yung kanyang aggregation. When we say aggregation, platelet to platelet magbabind yan kasi to form a platelet plug. Pag walang glycoprotein 2B3A, hindi sila magdidikit-dikit. It will not hold the two platelets together and it will lead to the dissolution of your platelet Platelet, easy dissolution of your platelet plug, then bleeding. 
lahat nito ang kalalabasan mo bleeding. So please take uh, please take note of the deficient proteins, okay? One will branch disease easy lang, one will branch factor Bernard Solier, glycoprotein 1B plus manthrombastinia, glycoprotein 2B 3A. So that ends our chapter 52, RBCs and platelets. Uh, so chapter 53 pala yung RBCs.